Alright, in this video, we start learning basic controllers, which can be used in industrial processes. First, we'll have a short introduction to manual and automatic control. Then, we'll see what is on-off controller, and its problem, so, we will need to use on-off controller with dead band. These controllers need digital devices, which have two states, on or off. On other side, if analog devices are used, we can have PID controllers. Alright, each industrial process has some inputs and outputs. Simple control methods are independent of output states. If you remember, we have done a project with timers for this tank. We may open its draining valve for 10 minutes, although, it may drain within 5 minutes. Now. I won't show you what is the manual control system. Suppose the desired level is 130 centimeters, so, I click on this button to start tank filling. I have to constantly check the level, until it reaches the desired level. Now. I click again to stop tank filling. As you see, because of delay in the operation of the valve, the liquid level has reached above the desired level. Therefore, it is necessary to empty the tank a little. This control method, which works with human interaction is called manual control system. Therefore, in a manual control system, the performance of the system is highly dependent on the operator. This system has no special hazards, but for high-risk systems, the manual control method is not suitable, because of system maintenance and also operator safety. Today, many industrial processes are controlled automatically, which the output status is used to determine the system input. This is its complete diagram, which sensors and controllers are used instead the operator. Here, the transmitter measures the boiler pressure. The level sensor measures the liquid level inside the tank. And, we are using S7-1200 PLC as the system's controller. Let's explain this diagram. Assume that the liquid level inside the tank should be 150 centimeters. So, this is the reference value. Here, the output we want to control is the liquid level. Also, suppose the level sensor that is connected to the controller, shows the number 120. Now, the difference between the reference value and the actual value is 30. So, based on this difference, the controller knows the actual level is less than the reference value. Then, it will decide to turn on the inlet valve, to increase the liquid level inside the tank. If the liquid level reaches 160 centimeters, depending on the amount of error, the controller will decide to turn off the inlet valve, or even open the outlet valve. In this example, how the valves are turned on and off, determines the type of automatic control system. Let's start with the simple on-off controller. On-off controllers are used, when devices such as valves have only two on and off modes. Therefore, when the error value is positive, the controller can only open the inlet valve, and close it when the error is negative. Note that in this control method, the error sign is important not its amount. Let's see how this controller works. First, I determine the reference value, with this potentiometer. Because the current level of the liquid, is less than the reference value, the PLC opens the inlet valve automatically, until the liquid level reaches the reference value. As you see, because of delay in the valve, the level liquid is slightly higher than the reference value. 
Now, let's see the controller performance, when the draining valve is open. When the water level drops, the controller automatically opens the inlet valve, and closes it again, when the liquid level reaches the reference value. As you see, PLC is constantly trying to keep the liquid level at the reference value. But the liquid fluctuations inside the tank has affected the controller performance. It makes the inlet valve is turned on and off constantly, which can damage to the inlet valve. Let's see how this problem can be solved. This diagram shows the operation of the on-off controllers. As you know, this controller opens the filling valve, when the error is positive. Otherwise, its output will be off. The main problem is when the error is close to zero. Because in the presence of disturbances, such as fluctuations in the liquid, the controller output will be switched between on and off continuously. To solve this problem, we can use on-off controllers with a dead band. Pay attention to its diagram and this part. The controller output is off, until the error reaches 10 cm. After that, small disturbances cannot turn off the output immediately, because the output stays on, until the error reaches minus 10 cm. So, with this diagram, small disturbances cannot change the output states. Based on the process and disturbances, we can change this width. Now, let's modify the previous PLC program, to see this controller performance. This network is the main part of the on-off controller program. When the liquid level is less than reference, or set point, this number will be moved to this PLC output, to open the fill valve completely, otherwise, the filling valve will be close. Now, let's insert a dead band to this control logic. First, insert a SR instruction. Now, insert a substruction. Instead of using set point, we must subtract a 10 from that, and then use its result in the next comparison. Similarly, when the liquid level is greater than set point plus 10, the filling valve will be closed. Now let's test this program. Let's change the reference value, with this potentiometer. Alright, let's choose 80 centimeters. Automatically, PLC open the filling valve, to increase the liquid level. Tank filling will be stopped, if the liquid level reaches 90 centimeters, not 80.
Now, let's open the draining valve. Then, tank filling is started again, if the liquid level reaches 70 centimeters. As you see, the problem of liquid fluctuations inside the tank, has solved by the inserted dead band, to the previous on-off controller. Now, let's see what is proportional controllers. This controller multiplies the error value by a number such as KP. For example, if the error is 10, and the KP is 2, the output will be 20, if the error is negative 5, the output of the controller will be minus 10. So, the controller output is a number, which has more than two states. Therefore, in order to use this controller, analog equipment must be used. This diagram shows the relationship between the input and output of this controller, with the KP gain. Usually, we must consider some limitations in practice. Sometimes, we can't have negative value at the controller output. Because some electric devices only work with positive voltage. So the controller diagram will look like this. In this case, we can use two valves, a filling valve for positive errors, and a draining valve for negative errors. Next limitation is the output signal size. We cannot give an infinite voltage to an electric valve. So the diagram of a proportional controller could be like this. Now let's modify the previous project to have a controller with this logic. The inlet valve voltage change between 0 to 10. When the error is between 0 and 25 centimeters. All right, let me delete extra blocks. I need to have error value. So I subtract the liquid level from set point. Now, let's find and insert limit instruction. So, if the error is negative, its output will be zero, and if the error is greater than 25, its output remain 25. Now, I'm going to use norm and scale instructions like previous projects. If you remember, to have 10 volts at the PLC output, we must write 27648 at the output address. All right, this is the main part of my PLC program.
Let's test this control logic. Now, the reference value is 80, and the filling valve is open completely. As you see, when the liquid level reaches the set point, the filling valve voltage is decreased, until the level liquid is equal to the reference value. Alright, the proportional control is a type of PID controllers. We'll continue PID controllers in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe us.